Oh, anyhow, um, the story I was getting. Uh, I am so. I am not good at speaking that well. I'm so much better at writing down. Um, so here goes anyhow. Imagine yourself. You're, say, between five and eight years of age, and your family goes out on a boating trip and there's lots of other kids out there doing the same sort of thing I might not get this right because like I said I'm better at writing things down so there might be some um, uh, online lineal edits that you'll find that, you'll, that you might hear anyhow so you're all out there on the boat your family and all that and you see there's lots of other families on their boats and all that they're not that far offshore but you're five to eight years of age, you, can, you don't know how to swim, it's all a bit scary, it's all, wow, what's going on? Anyhow, huge storm hits. There's not, you can't, you can't see anybody that you recognise, that's your family or anything like that. You're washed up on an island and you are alone. And that island is now your home. You're not that far offshore, but no one comes looking for you and you don't know how to swim. You're too afraid to try for the very first time. So you make the most of it. You're five to eight years of age. You just make the best of it. You survive. You've got, you look over <clears throat> over the side and you see other little islands. And there are, there are kids, lonely as hell, on those islands. So it's happened. It's like widespread. And you, and you wonder, you look at them and you just think, I wonder if they're feeling the same things that I'm feeling. I wonder if that's the way you know, I'll, I'll, I wonder what would it be like if I went over there and actually contacted that person, but you're too afraid to swim. It's just as simple as that. You're too afraid to swim to get away from there. It is so much easier just to stay on that island and work through it. You've heard the stories before about how to, you know, all the bush tucker and, oh, you know, like, you know, getting, getting food from the ground and all that sort of stuff. Um, living. Um, you know, you collect rainwater and in turtle shells, all that sort of stuff. You survive. You do the best you can. Okay, you, um, you, you're now up around 25, 30 years of age. And you notice on the islands, that some of them are vacant. Actually, half of them, they're gone. The people on there are gone. They've checked out. They've, they're, they're not with us anymore. They didn't die of starvation. They didn't die of dehydration. They died of loneliness. They died because they longed that all they wanted to do was get back to land and get back to normal. Things just aren't right anymore. Everything in their world had changed and they could not handle the fact that that had changed so hard. And in fact, it stopped them trying to survive in the best way they could. It was a problem they couldn't get over. Anyhow, you're 25 to 30. You've seen this happen. You've learnt how to swim too. But you only swim in shallow waters where you can fish and you can do all the things that you need to do. You also remember the stories that... Actually, this is back when you're, when you're 5 to 8. You remember the stories the adult adults have said about jungle kids how kids that were found to have grown up in the jungle and like Tarzan you know they they come out of the jungle and try and reintegrate into society and they just make a balls up out of it people tease them some of them get killed you know nobody really wants them around and they're just a pain in the ass and and you know they're just a bird you know so at that stage, that's what people thought, you know, and you've heard those stories. So when you were five and eight years of age, you knew in your heart that you weren't a jungle kid. You're an island kid. But what's the difference? It's exactly the same. You're ostracized. doesn't matter. You're going to be alone whether you're on the island or whether you're off the island. So why bother swimming that extra distance to the land? Nobody's come to look for you. Nobody's come to check on you. Nobody really knows where you are or even who you are. 
so you just survive. Suddenly, out of the freaking blue, a boat pops up, lands on the island, stretches out a couple of deck chairs, two people sit down and start, you know, enjoying this island. You walk up and you go, hey dude, what are you doing? They're going, well this is an island. Dude, what are you doing? And you're going, well I've been living here, I'm 25 to 30 years of age, I've been here since I was like 5 to 8. Um, what's the go? And they said, really? Have you been here that long? You're an island kid. And you go, well, yeah, like, but don't tell anyone, please, because, you know, and they go, no, 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 things are a bit different now. You know, um, they don't get killed as much. They don't get teased as much. Even though island people, well, people still don't know about island people, but as far as jungle people, that's all cool. You know, everything's cool. Laws have been passed. Jungle kids are protected. As far as island kids, they're not really protected yet, but we'll get there in, the, in a few years. What do you reckon you come back to land with us? And you just think, what the fuck? <laughs> um, well, that would be great because I'd be able to do all the things that I remember that I wanted to do when I was like five and eight years of age. and oh, That'd be pretty cool. And you start entertaining that thought and then suddenly you think, well, hang on a minute. I've, there could be some really bad ramifications that, um, that happen in all of this. So, what do I do? Well, you don't know what to do. Now I've got another problem happening. Because you know how to live and survive on that island. You're 25 to 30 years of age, for frick's sake. You've done it. You've already been there, done that. Like... Hey, it's happening. You got it worked out. There's your little teepee. There's your, there's your fire. It's been going now for like the last 10 years. You figured out how to keep the fire going. You know, you don't have to keep restarting it all the time. Everything is freaking cool. Well, sort of to a point. Because you do always remember what it was like up to the age of five to eight years of age. And you really do want that to have happen again. It's a pretty cool feeling to be a part of all the stuff that was going on. But being alone is not really that much fun. But freaking hell, you know, I'm going to put myself at jeopardy with all the things that could happen out there. Um, and I don't look the part. I've got hair that goes down to my knees. I've got a beard that's just like you would not freaking believe. Um, I've got scars and gashes. I've lost a finger from a bloody crocodile that came on, on shore one time when I was about 19. I don't really look fully the part of all the people that live on the mainland. I'm really an island person. And you just think, Freak, what do you do? You really, really, really have held on your whole life to the fact that you're not really an island boy. You weren't born on the island. Um, you know, so you think, well, what can I do? Well, that's the decision. If, and it doesn't matter which way you go, it's still a very hard decision. That is exactly what it's like. It's the exact dilemma that I keep, that I refer to and all that sort of stuff. It's something that you were you already were. Um, I know for a fact that when, up to the age of five, I always thought I was going to turn into a female, for Christ's sake. Um, yeah, about eight or nine years of age, that's when I sort of thought things aren't going to be that way. And by the, pu by the time puberty set in, it was out of control. Totally out of control. I had to adopt a persona that made me less noticeable and I adopted that for so long that it is now not just second nature it's almost so intertwined with my nature that it's it's readdressing that that is my job all right and my major thing so <clears throat> 
there you go mate um, that's the best I can do for you uh, I'll try and put that story down on words um, on paper or something like that because it sort of needs to be continuous or have some continuity about it because I am not a good speaker uh, unless I know what I'm talking about as in a piece of paper sort of blah 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 or if it's a song that's too easy so anyhow I bid you farewell um, have very fun thank you uh, linesman thank you ball boy and um, uh, I'm sure we'll have a short recess and resume playing soon catch you later you pack of mad bastards